Hi, I'm Jessica Walsh, founder of Our Expands. Thank you for this opportunity to tell you about a very innovative auto injector our team has developed. Mini inject hands down, be a game changing solution for people around the world who need to carry emergency injectable medication. So I always like to ask a quick show of hands. How many people here have heard of EpiPen or know of someone who needs to carry an auto injector? Oh, great. I think you'll really appreciate what our team has accomplished. And for those of you who are not familiar, no worries, I'll explain. An auto injector delivers a shot of injectable medication. It can mean the difference between life or death if you have it or not. And this is for people who have conditions such as anaphylaxis, which is a severe life-threatening allergy to things like peanuts, or in my case, bee stings. People are at risk for opioid overdose, or for the military who need to carry anti-chemical warfare agents. In the US, over 60 million people need to carry emergency injectable medication, but 40 million don't and choose to risk their life why? Auto injectors on the market do not meet patients' needs. Let me explain. They're cumbersome. When I go running, I ended up duct taping to mine to the arm. I looked ridiculous. It's so embarrassing. Moms are fighting with their kids to carry it, and kids don't want any part of it. One out of three are bullied in school for having it. They're also temperature sensitive and intimidating to use, which just causes further delay in administration. They're confusing to use. 70% of patients who are prescribed an EpiPen don't know or don't remember how to use it. They're also easy to forget and often left behind in a home, car, or backpack. Sadly, 40% of people who died didn't receive a shot of epinephrine. Yet patient compliance is still low. And that is the problem. That problem in patient compliance, that gap in compliance is what we set out to solve. So we got to work and we created Miniject. It's our type of auto injector. It's wearable, durable, thermal resistant, cost effective, really easy to use. You just take off the cap and press it against your leg. It injects and retracts in under a fourth of a second. It's that easy. We also gave it accessory attachments to go with items that patients care most, some of which will be available with data sensors that will provide patient critical information, such as where you left it or what the temperature is, or if it's been recently fired and send a notification to a parent. Finally, an auto injector that adjusts to our lifestyle opposed to the other way around. We've also worked closely with patients since the inception, working on identifying their needs and making sure that our auto injector included them. We've run several patient surveys that have provided quantifiable data that show Miniject is what patients want and can be priced at a uh, afford of what they can afford. Miniject is also a drug delivery platform, essentially a container. Think like a soda can. There's a number of profitable markets for the many drugs Miniject can deliver. Our first vertical will be for epinephrine, which by the way, has a 15% growth rate. So how do we stack up to the competition? You can see many jacked over there on the right. It's less than two and a half inches long. We like to think of it as the iPhone to EpiPen's phone booth, an EpiPen. Designed back in World War II and hasn't substantially changed since that time. People often mistake the orange tip as a button and inject their thumb. Ouch, yet it still has 1.3 billion in sales. Adrenoclick. Another six inch confusing auto injector with low patient compliance. And then AviQ, licensed for $230 million to Sanofi because it was square and it talked to you. This is also going to be the auto injector that I'll be using in the future as a comps, just to keep it in mind. As you can see, there has been a lack of creativity and innovation from Big Pharma 
they keep churning out a sea of pen-like auto-injectors that simply don't meet patients' needs. Most recently this year, Teva launched their EpiPen knockoff look-alike auto-injectors, second to the bottom. It has all the same problems, except for it costs less. Miniject addresses patients' needs and also can be sold for under $200 and still be profitable. It will be the most inexpensive auto-injector on the market. We thought that a good design didn't need to be cost prohibitive for patients. We've also taken significant steps to de-risk this investment. Our design has been built off a solid engineer and been lab tested for performance and we've gotten great results. We've also met with the FDA and are approved for an expedited 505B2 approval process. This takes or saves us a significant amount of time and money. We're talking about years and millions of dollars. Why? Because we don't need to do in-human testing, no clinicals. We do have to do performance testing to show that it works, stability to prove our um, expiration dates, and human factors testing to show that it's safe and effective for use. We have a strong and growing IP strategy. Our patents have been issued in the US. We filed internationally. We picked up a continuation application that allows us to reach back to a priority date to build upon our claims and additional patents have been filed. Our capital efficient team has made great strides in designing, testing and building upon our IP. We've also won a couple of awards and grants along the way, and we've met with and selected our contractors and are ready to go. We're now raising eight to 10 million to take us all the way through the FDA approval process, during which period of time, we're going to look to either license Miniject or for a possible IPO or to be acquired or for a buyout. This is within a two year time frame. So our use of proceeds is going to be to hire our contractors to start our manufacturing for testing, to take it all the way through FDA approval. We're looking at three different possible revenue streams. Licensing, which is for many different therapeutics in different locations. For example, we could license to one company for epinephrine in the US and another one in Canada or Brazil. We could license in Israel for atrophine and for a liquid stable formulation for glucagon in the EU. So there's lots of possibilities there. Um, our sale of our device can only happen after FDA approval. You can't sell a device uh, without uh, approval. Um, we're looking at an Amazon pill pack subscription based model for our delivery. We feel the market has now changed. Pharma hasn't quite caught up to this yet, and, but we feel the market is ready. People are used to having things delivered to their door. Our accessories are based upon consumer demand. Really, we're only limited by our creativity here since the approval process is so short. What does the licensing strategy look like? Well, it's typically upfront um, payment followed by milestones and double digit royalties. Do we pull these numbers out of thin air? No, I think the Square Auto Injector licensed to Sanofi for $230 million. If we go to market, we believe these numbers are more than achievable. This market is ripe for disruption and starving for innovation. Um, our projections are at, starting at 1%, even though AviQ took 13% of the market upon launch, we hope to under-promise and over-deliver, blow these numbers out of the water. Therefore, we've selected contractors that are, have the ability to support us and scale. We have built upon and capitalized the amazing team that we've put together. They have decades of experience in IP, pharmacology, finance, engineering, manufacturing. For example, we have uh, Stephen who 
it was a former Johnson & Johnson engineer. We have uh, David DeLugo, who has brought other epinephrine auto-injectors through the quality and regulatory management process. We have Yas Young, who uh, was uh, head of drug development for two other auto-injectors, the square one that you saw, and also adrenoglyc, the one that was located between the two. Um, I, besides being a patient, also come from a construction and engineering background, running multi-million dollar projects, building teams, executing on time and under budget. We also have a stellar board of advisors, too many to list here. If you're interested, you can go to rxbands.com forward slash teams. We've been honored to have won several awards and grants. We recently competed in RSI Vienna during Bio Week. We won the Life Sciences Innovation Competition. We also won a grant from the New England Pediatric Device Consortium. We we're up against Harvard doctors and MIT innovators. We won both rounds of the grants, and it was a great stamp of validation from the New England com medical community. In terms of possible exits, we have more than one. We could IPO either before or after our FDA approval, or we could look at a potential buyout or acquisition from a large pharma or device or connected health company. So why invest? What makes this a great opportunity? Well, there's a huge market demand on a global scale. We've done a lot to de-risk this investment. We're looking at a quick two-year return. Comps say that we're looking in the range to three to 10x based upon what was previously done, all led by experienced team. I'd like to invite you to join us in helping us to arm patients around the world with a better option to save their life. We like to say our expanse is built for health, but styled for life. I'd like to thank you for the taking the time to listen. Thanks. <laughs>